Welcome, everybody, to another episode of 3-Minute Marketing. I'm your man, Chris Mechanic. Uh, very excited today to have with me Brandon Kane. Uh, Brandon Kane is the social marketing mastermind behind a lot of big names that you know, including Rihanna, Taylor Swift. He's worked with MTV. He's worked with Vice, uh, author of One Million Followers, uh, a, a brilliant methodology and timeless, really. Uh, to grow your social media following, and also a client of Web Mechanics as of very recently, who we're very excited to work with. So, Brendan, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to connect with you and everybody that is listening to this. Absolutely, yeah. And those of you that have been listening for a while know what we're all about. We're all about growth marketers, performance marketers. We really love you, uh, unicorns. We bring them here on the show, and we condense it all down into these three-minute value bombs. So we're going for the highest value per minute marketing podcasts in the world. If you like it, please drop a thumbs up or su uh, subscribe or leave a comment. We do like reading those. So I've got your question today, Brendan. Uh, and it's one that's actually very near and dear to my heart. One of my current obsessions actually is with algorithms and machine learning and uh, algo training or the robots as we call them. So the question that I've got for you as I got my timer set up here is basically how can marketers harness the algos these days to get more reach, more impact, basically to show up in the news feeds, et cetera? And time starts now. Yeah, so I would say that the first place to start is just to really understand the world that we live in today um, and the purpose of the algorithms, because I think that there's a lot of misinformation and frustration with the algorithms. And I don't blame people for being frustrated because even though we work in this space, we get frustrated ourselves. But first understand the goal of the algorithm. It is not there to get you to pay for reach. That is a huge myth. The algorithms are there to do one thing and one thing only. And that is to keep people on the platform longer. Because the longer you spend on that platform, the more ads they can serve you as an individual. So the algorithms have a very difficult job because today there's 3.96 billion people on these social media platforms publishing hundreds of billions of messages every single day. So the algorithms are looking for, again, content that is going to retain their audience and users as long as possible. So how do we then work with that? Because with hundreds of billions of messages means that the algorithms have hundreds of billions of messages to choose from. So there's two principles that you have to master in order to benefit from the algorithms. Number one, are you stopping the scroll? In the case of YouTube, a lot of traffic is generated from suggested videos. So it's clicking on the hump, thumbnail and headline, but if we're talking about Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, TikTok. Are we stopping the scroll? Because that's the first signal to the algorithm is your content going to retain attention? Because if you don't stop the scroll, you never get to the story or anything like that. Number two is once we've stopped the scroll, how long can we hold that attention for? What does that retention graph look like? So what is the story that we're telling once we've grabbed that attention? Because you know the age of clickbait is technically over with the algorithm. They're smarter with it because in the beginning they were just looking at stopping the scroll or earning a click. And then they move to a more retention-based model. So when we talk about maximizing the benefit of the algorithms to generate reach, engagement, sales, leads, we have to play in to those um, critical factors. One, how do we stop the scroll? And number two, how long do we hold that attention for? Now, just to give you kind of a little case study on the differences, I was um, interviewing a friend of mine who's one of the top TikTok creators on the planet. He just hit 20 million followers. We looked at the retention of his number one video, which is 90 million views, and the one that was 5 million views. The difference in the retention between those two is the 90 million view retention was 28 seconds. The 5 million was 21 seconds. So a seven-second difference represented 85 million views in, in that performance difference. So that's wow. really where we focus um, in terms of maximizing the benefit of algorithms for growth. That is absolutely brilliant. I love it. Um, and let's definitely talk more about that. Uh, so basically, stop the scroll. Huge element. Scroll stopping or thumb stopping even. And maintain that attention. Dwell time. So that means long form content probably. 
in most cases. Anyway, uh, it, does, well, it depends on the platform. It, de- it depends on the platform that you're focused on. Um, cause we don't, we don't say create long form content for the sake of creating long form content, create content that leads to a longer form format. Now YouTube's yeah. a bit different. You know, they're heavily waiting long form content, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, they are waiting retention, but that doesn't mean that you have to have necessarily long form content. Cause I'd rather see you have um, a minute video that holds retention for 50 seconds than a 10 minute video that's holding retention for 30 seconds. Mm, so it, gotcha. again, it's a big quality over quantity or quality over length that, yep. that we really focus on. Well, Hey, I really enjoyed having you. I just remembered that I've not mentioned your latest venture. I don't know if it's still quiet or if you want to talk about um, hook at all. Yeah. So uh, at hook point, and if you want to find more information on what I just talked about, you can go to hookpoint.com and, watch. We have a, a free video that breaks it down and you can download our, our deck there too. But essentially we teach these processes of, of how to effectively uh, gain uh, momentum with the algorithms, no matter whether you're going after paid or organic or what industry you're in. Uh, so at Hookpoint, we designed a system over being in social media for over 17 years that allows you to master those two things. Well, I might have to be a client of yours. Thank you very much, Brendan. Uh, We will continue talking if you guys are into this. Uh, There should be some more bonus footage in the show notes somewhere around this video. Uh, And thanks again for dropping a like or a comment. Let us know what you want to hear more about, and we shall deliver. Thank you very much. So on content, you mentioned quality over uh, quantity. That's something we've heard a lot of. Um, and you also mentioned this idea of one minute videos, which I'm kind of intrigued by. I don't know if you know Dennis Yu, but Dennis Yu is all about, you know, these quick one minute videos. And he does this dollar a day strategy where he basically boosts posts uh, mm-hmm. for a dollar a day. Really interesting guy and interesting technique. But like, what are some topics? Like if you think for like, you know, a typical brand, or you could even look at Ikea or a brand that's like not necessarily sexy, but but like, what are some topics or some angles? Uh, for content that you think do well? Well, I, I, we don't really look at it in terms of topics per se. You know, the, one of the biggest mistakes people make in designing content is they don't start with the research. Uh, so everything that we do fundamentally starts with research. So this is the typical model that most people are following when it comes to social media. So typically what people are doing is they're starting with some type of brand guideline that is driving their creative decisions, their creative ideation decisions. Uh, Then they'll go into these monthly quarterly content plans. So they'll kind of plan things out for the month or for the quarter, and then they'll go into produce all of them and then post and then review the results monthly or quarterly. Uh, This again is the the system that most brands are using and it's why 99% of people are failing with, with social media. Um, because this model minimizes the impact of, of data on making those creative decisions. Uh, it really doesn't provide for an agile creative output and taking advantage of work, what's working now in the algorithms. And, and the model is almost completely reactive. There's no process in place for accountability, iteration, and growth about, based on granular results. And essentially, it's making things go viral dependent on luck versus the model that we've designed over the past 17 years is really merging the creative uh, with the scientific methodology. So we're always starting with research. So you can look at topics or trends, but we could look at a topic that probably works really well and a topic that doesn't work well. So we're always starting with research and identifying the formats that are driving results and also the formats that are not driving results. And we're basing our creative uh, process, both from um, just a creative brainstorming and a hypothesis building and the ideation process based upon the research. So we're never creating ideas or, or content just in a vacuum. We're actually going out and researching. We do this every day of content creators. And typically we're going outside of our niche because most people are not successful with social media 
And when we're working with a client, typically your competitors will show you what not to do oftentimes, but not what to do. Yeah. Um, so, and then, what, so what does that research entail? What kind of research do you do? I mean, we're just constantly digging into social content mm-hmm. where, you know, depending on the platform. So if it's YouTube, we're digging into to YouTube and identifying uh, formats that either support or detract from the hypothesis we have. So each individual platform is different. If it's paid ads, same process. Maybe we'll go dive into like the Facebook ad library, do Google searches, just kind of identifying what, what's working, what's not working. Mm-hmm. And then one of the biggest important differentiators is we're going in a single iteration in production planning. So only producing one content at a time based upon the research and the hypothesis that we've built so that we can review the results from that single piece of content and understand, did our hypothesis help hold true? Versus when you create a, a slate of content, it's hard to tell well, what's what's really driving and what's not. So we go to the single iteration to review the results and then go back to that research phase and start the process all over again. So this is where we've seen the most success. Um, and also what we found is most people are not doing. They're, they're not doing any research. They're just kind of designing ideas based on brand guidelines or just a creative brainstorm without actually vetting whether or not it's it has the potential. Yeah. Yeah. So are there certain types of uh, organizations or verticals or offers that this works better or worse for? Like, could this apply to like a boring? It applies to anything. Applies to anything. I mean, we have seen every vertical either have failure or success. Like, I, you know, there's a, like, let's just take taxes, for example. Taxes is yeah. the least sub, you know, sexy subject, and you think it can't go viral. But you look at a YouTube account like Clear Tax Value. Mm-hmm. There's a guy sitting behind a desk, and he's going viral talking about taxes because of the format and the structure, his headlines, his thumbnails, things like that. Um, doctors, Doctor Mike on YouTube is another example that yeah. went viral. Portrait photography, Humans of New York did it. So there's there's an example of every single niche that this can be applied to. It's not, some people think, oh, I'm in taxes or I'm a doctor or I'm an accountant. I can't make my my content sexy or viral. You can. Yeah. So um, how do you go about doing this research? Are you like, do you have some ninja like search operators that you're using or some tool or are you just kind of have people Googling around and looking for stuff? Yeah. I mean, it all starts with us internally in our own our own curiosity, our own eagerness to learn. So we as a team are constantly sharing references back and forth. Mm -hmm. Uh, Internally, when we're working with clients, it's kind of a never ending process for us. And it starts with us being consumers of the platform. It's like, I don't know how you get good at a platform without actually using the platform. Mm -hmm. So we're constantly consuming content um, just from our own curiosity and being a user ourselves. And then when we want to go more detailed, uh, we will create tracking sheets mm-hmm. that it's like, if we want to vet a specific idea, we'll create a tracking sheet that kind of ranks, like, for example, we just did one for, for Instagram reels mm-hmm. by vertical. So we did it and ranked, you know, the top um, reels, what we learned from each one. And then we weighted it based upon how it could be applicable to us or our clients. And then we make informed decisions off of that. So it first starts with our own kind of usage of the platforms. And then when we have a very specific project or a client, then we will go in and perform more extensive uh, research beyond that. Yeah. I can't help but to think that there, there, uh, it'd be like a really cool idea for a tool basically to just go out, search and scrape like these different categories of things. But on yeah, that, I mean, there, there is any... like, there is a tool like tubular labs. Uh, mm-hmm. it's, it's very expensive, but it only scrapes. It only provides the data. It's what you do with it. Like we're in the process of building a technology to walk you through that viral content engineering process. Um, because again, it's the process it's, 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 your know, data is helpful, but data is only as good as what you infer from it and the hypothesis that you build off of it and then measuring whether or not you're effective with it. Mm-hmm. Yep. I totally hear you. And we ourselves are very guilty of just kind of posting stuff like our social strategy ourselves is 
you know, inconsistent, kind of lacking. Like I personally, sometimes I'm like, Hey, this would be cool to post. And I'll just like go and post it. Um, but, uh, but we are getting more serious about it. Could you be my consultant for like five minutes real quick? Yeah. So we're an agency, right? A performance agency, um, primarily, you know, obviously paid media analytics, conversion rate optimization are really our big three. We do, a, uh, we have a really good UX creative team devs, and we're basically looking probably for similar customers, you know, similar to you guys. Like we like financial services, health, EDU, uh, home services is pretty good for us. And we look for, you know, sizable brands and budgets, call it like 50 grand a month or hundred grand a month or more in media. Um, if we want to get real serious about social and really like, and I'm talking organic social because mm-hmm. paid social does pretty well, but organic social, like how, like what kind of, how would you think to start that research process or like, what would you look to for examples of what's working? Well, the first thing that you have to understand is, especially going back to the conversation we had about algorithms is you have to make the content accessible for the general audience. Because the minute you're designing organic content for a very specific niche audience, you're going to get killed in the algorithm. Because then, you know, when the algorithm tests it beyond your followers and they see people are not stopping, it's not retaining attention, your reach gets automatically shut off. So the first place to start is how do we make it accessible and interesting for the general audience, but still plays to the underlying subtext of the audience that you want to speak to? Mm -hmm. So a prime example of this is Ryan Serhant. He's one of the top real estate agents in the world. um, But he he specializes in selling ultra luxury properties, 10, 20, 30, $100 million properties. So when you think about that, his audience is relatively specific in terms of what drives sales for his business. But what he did so brilliantly is he played to the general audience. So if you look at his YouTube channel, he takes people on a tour of a $7 million closet, mm-hmm. like a $150 million ranch, because he knows the average person is going to be interested in that. Yep. And thus, it triggers people to retain with the video and watch large chunks of it, which signals to the algorithm, this is good content. Let's seed it to more and more and more people. So he'll get millions of views on his videos. And he knows that, A, he's building brand with those millions of people, but also a very small percentage of them, probably a fraction of a percent, actually has the ability to afford those properties. But because he's playing the numbers game, it gives him that ability to reach that audience. And he has said that he has sold 10, 20, $30 million condos in New York off of YouTube videos. So it's, it's, you've got to, and this is the problem of, of kind of previous marketing tactics that are a bit outdated, that everybody says you need to niche down and you need to design content specifically for that niche. Now, can that still work for paid? For warm traffic? Yeah, I would say yes. Cold track traffic, eh, it's a little iffy because cold paid traffic is still fighting against organic. But when you're specifically talking about organic, you have to play and contextualize your content for the general audience. And that is where most people are going wrong. Mm. Yeah, that's actually brilliant. I've not heard that before. I've always heard basically the opposite of like go niche and then the algo will go and find those. But that's, I guess, yeah. Because because think about it. If an algorithm has, let's just say, a billion pieces of content to choose from, are they going to choose and spend all their time trying to match content with specific niche audiences, or are they going to focus their time on what is the video that I can send to millions of people that's going to hold attention for a long period of time? Mm-hmm. In addition to the fact, typically that communication when you're niching down is pretty dry and not interesting and not stopping the scroll. So it makes it really difficult. Even if you're putting it in front of that audience, you've got to understand Let's just say you're putting your piece of content in front of the decision maker. You've got to understand they just watched LeBron James dunk a basketball. They just watched the later, the last Stranger Things trailer. Kevin Hart telling a joke. And now you've got your piece of content. It has to stack up against that. 
And I'm not saying yeah. from a production standpoint, but from a storytelling standpoint. Yep. I totally hear you. So then what might, what, what would be our equivalent of walking somebody through the $7 million villa? Well, we would have to just develop those. Hook points. <laughs> you're like, yeah, you're, Oh, I get it. Now the name hook point. Interesting. You're like, now nah, you got to start paying me for this one, buddy. <laughs> No, it just takes time. You know, we, yeah. we, we take into a consider typically when we're working with clients, we spend 90 minutes with them in our first session to really dig in yeah. to their, their differentiators. What is the biggest pain that they're solving in the market? Um, again, the research behind it, um, things like that. Uh, but I can, I actually, uh, pulled up a spreadsheet. I can show you kind of a little bit what, uh, what our research looks like. Um, and the depth that we go to. Um, so we have um, this rating over here kind of tells us, you know, from a scale of, of one to five, whether it's relevant to us, five mm -hmm. being the highest. And then kind of we have the link to the video, the different categories. Um, we have notes. Um, and then we're kind of doing some reaction videos off of this. So we put shooting notes in here. But it just kind of shows you the level that we go to in our research to inform decisions uh, of what's working, what's not working. Yeah. And you guys are actually, uh, shooting videos and creating the content. Yeah. So one of our formats is reacting to content reaction format is a pretty well-known format. We've seen a lot of success with it and it's, it plays into our business goals of breaking down why content goes viral. Mm, interesting reaction pieces. I've not thought of that either. Well, this was awesome, man. I want to be sensitive to your time. I would invite you back anytime. I hope that you will take me up on that. Um, and thank you.